Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so we will be talking about the latest on Invest 94L as well as a new disturbance uh, that is in the Gulf of Mexico. But our main focus will be on 94L and of course sections of the Caribbean will be impacted by this system here. And so we'll go into all the details and see the latest that the various models are expecting from the system. And so before I do so... All right, so we are taking a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, and we're seeing that 94L now has a high 70% chance of development. So it's no longer in that medium range. It is now in that high range for development and so uh, it is likely that this thing here could become a tropical depression or a tropical storm during the next couple of days more than likely maybe by the midweek thereabout and so uh, this is going to be on approach to the lesser antilles about late tuesday going into wednesday thereabouts so um, you guys definitely have to monitor the progress of the system because if you are in islands such as Barbados, St. Lucia, maybe Martinique as well, St. Vincent, Grenada, uh, and Trinidad and Tobago as well, and even over in the ABC Islands. You guys definitely have to keep an eye on this system because it looks as though it is going to be making that general westward track. It's going to be moving due west without uh, making any northern turn as a result of that high pressure system that's going to be steering it. So the Lesser Antilles, the Windward Islands, the ABC Islands, uh, you guys definitely have to keep watch on this system here because it is likely that you will feel some impacts from it and then from that point onwards next is likely to be central america specifically maybe nicaragua honduras so those areas definitely will have to keep an eye on this but again things can change and uh, we're definitely going to have to wait and see what the eventuality is going to be but there will be more certainty as the system makes its way closer and closer to the region and so how strong could it get let us go ahead and take a look at what the model intensity guidance is showing and so for various models here we see that majority of these are expecting that this thing will achieve tropical storm status some are showing a hurricane uh we have a few that go up to category two and category three so we need conditions to be really favorable for that to happen very low wind shear a very favorable environment as well as a lot of moisture around so uh Ocean temperatures, on the other hand, they are pretty warm going to the ocean temperature map right now. Uh, we see that things are pretty warm in the Caribbean. Once 94L crosses over, it's going to be within that 28 degrees Celsius isotherm. So things are pretty favorable. We need at least 26.5 Celsius and we have 28. So things are very favorable. But if you were talking about this thing here heading into the Gulf of Mexico and things were highly favorable, that would be a completely different scenario because the Gulf has a very, very warm ocean temperatures right now look at 31 degrees celsius 30 degrees celsius definitely favorable to enable rapid intensification but fortunately that's not the case however there is a gulf system that we want to talk about uh but first let's go ahead and take a look at what the various models are now expecting for 94 L. And so first up, we have the GFS. And so by Wednesday on the 29th, the model has this thing here crossing uh, into the Caribbean. And behind it, there is another tropical wave that is moving through. Icon is showing something interesting for that second wave. But let's go on with GFS first. And then as we head to Saturday on the 2nd of July, GFS has this thing here in the South Caribbean accelerating westward and intensifying. But for that second wave, uh, the model is showing that it is not going to become anything very major maybe it will try to develop into a tropical cyclone but uh, for the most part we're seeing that it is really 94L that's in the picture right now. And then as we head to uh, later on the day on Saturday, we're seeing that the pressure has decreased to 984 millibars just before this thing here is likely going to be making its way over into Nicaragua. Next we have the Euro model and so Euro is showing maybe uh, pretty much the same thing of this thing here making its way over into the caribbean maybe by wednesday thereabout and then crossing over the vicinity of the abc islands and then accelerating to the uh 
to the mainland territory of Nicaragua with the pressure of 991 millibars thereabout. So it could be a strong tropical storm at the time of landfall. Meanwhile, GFS is showing a much lower pressure, which could make it a Cat 1 hurricane. CMC, on the other hand, now CMC was one of those models that was just showing something completely different. And now they're starting to hop on to what GFS and Euro are expecting. So it is showing a stronger system crossing over the Lesser Antilles, though not as weak as what GFS and Euro were showing. But but eventually by Saturday on the 2nd, the model has this thing here uh, making landfall just, I would say, just along that borderline of Nicaragua, Honduras, but mainly going to be making its way over into Honduras and then uh, over into the other territories of Central America, such as Guatemala and over into Mexico. So now we have CMC hopping onto this and there is pretty much a lot of confidence among these models here. And finally, let's take a look at Icon. So as I said earlier, Icon is showing something interesting with that second wave behind 94L. And so by Wednesday, yes, it has a system crossing over into the Caribbean and eventually making that general westward track. But take a look behind it. We have that other wave somewhat intensifying. Uh, it has a pressure of t uh, 1,008 millibars. And so that could be a tropical depression. Very interesting here what the icon model is showing, but uh, aside from GFS, the other models are not really picking up on that. So let's wait and see what's going to be happening. But as of now, the NHC has not highlighted that second wave behind 94L. But even if it's going to be moving through, it could bring a lot of rainfall to sections of the Lesser Antilles after 94L, which might be a tropical depression or tropical storm at that point uh, crosses into the Caribbean. So we have to wait and see what's going to be happening. Okay, guys. And so lastly, let's look at that other disturbance. And so as of now, it is located just off the Florida Panhandle and it is given a 20% chance to possibly develop. So it's going to be loitering a bit in portions of the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. And so in that shaded area is where we could see some gradual development of the system here. And so, uh, Let's see what's going to be happening with it. But again, the chance is pretty low right now. And let's see if it is going to be intensifying into something significant. But the models are not really showing that. And this thing here is not designated as an invest as of right now. So let's wait and see what the eventual outcome is going to be for that system as well. Uh, but all eyes are really on 94L right now. And so guys, I will be keeping you updated. And again, if you're on the Winward Islands and ABC Islands as well, please be on watch. This thing here is likely to be maybe a tropical cyclone when it is going to be crossing your area and it might bring some uh, dangerous conditions. And so guys, that is it for this update. And if you found it to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be with wise.